Hey, what's going on y'all? Now in today's video, I would like to talk to y'all about retention. Cherish the challenge. This journey is not easy. I think that's plain to say, especially when you're at the beginning of your journey and you've yet or you've yet to conquer the uh, the peaks of your urges. You know, what I mean, you've yet to overcome or you've yet to resist the many urges that will come your way as you try to deprogram your mind. It's not easy. And you have to remember that this isn't something that goes away overnight. These urges, this desire to fap, this desire to go seek out these promiscuous women, you know, this doesn't disappear overnight. Especially when you've had, if, if, if it's women, you have a bunch of women around you. Or when you have porn, porn is free. You can just look up porn whenever you want. A 12-year-old boy can look up porn whenever he wants, whenever he'd like. Sick. And here's the thing. It's free up front. And this is something that I want to get to later in the video. But these things have a hidden cost. You know, they may be nice in the short term, but in the long term, they're detrimental. Incredibly so. You pay with your soul. You pay with your testosterone. You pay with your masculinity. That's what you pay for when you pay when you watch porn. It's not free. You are paying something at the end. You are paying with your brain, your brain's dopamine receptors. By shoving this incredibly, you know, uh, uh, dopaminergic uh, media in front of it. You know what I mean? You're, you're filling your brain with, you know, these things that are firing off your receptors. Naked bodies, naked bodies, ah, ah, ah. You know what I'm saying? Frying your receptors on maximum heat. It's a, it's a tarnishing thing to do your brain. You're, I mean, damaging your brain undeniably. You know, it's one thing to see a naked body in a movie or, you know, some titties when you're, so some cleavage when you're scrolling through your gram or whatever. But it's like, it's a whole other thing when you have this stuff flashed in your face, powerful sex, something that you're really not only, you're only supposed to see like in that kind of moment when you are actually partaking in that. And here's the thing, even if you are partaking in that with some promiscuous woman, not the woman that you love, not the woman you're trying to build a relationship with, but with just some girl, late night fling. And you're wasting it in the exact same way. Because you're not building anything. It's not going to anything. It's going to a fun night. A little bit of pleasure. Good in the short term. Damaging in the long term. Detrimental down the line. So, journey isn't easy. And to break that habit of coming. And, uh, you know, of that desire, really. But in Napoleon Hill, in his book, Outwitting the Devil, he calls it hypnotic rhythm. Where you get into this rhythm of doing something over and over again, and the universe reinforces it. The universe, you know, uh, st uh, adds more to that. If, and it goes for every habit, you know. If you put in a little bit, the universe is going to pick that up and make it easier for you to go and do that a little more. And do that a little more. It goes for good habits and bad habits. Let's say it's going to the gym. It's a good habit. You know, you're trying to make it a point to go to the gym a little more. If you decide every day you're going to push past that, that urge to just stay in bed and, you know, be comfortable and you're going to get it, get your ass out of bed in the morning and get to work, you're going to get to that gym, you're going to work out, the universe will make it easier and easier every time you go and do that until it becomes completely natural for you to just get out of bed and go to the gym. In the same vein, if you decide, yeah, not today, yeah, not today, yeah, not today, it'll be easier and easier for you to decide, yeah, not today. Because that's what you put forward into the universe. The universe can only pick that up and reinforce it. So, to break hypnotic rhythm requires, and the easiest way I should say, to break hypnotic rhythm is failure. It takes a massive failure for you to ever get shocked out of that. And it really, it just helps you re reinforce your reason as to why. But we'll get down to the reasons why. And why, why you need to have a why. So remember, breaking hypnotic rhythm requires a failure. And so often when you face these failures on your journey, you know, I mean, you have your, this intention not to relapse. You know, you're trying to trying to hold strong and man, one night it just hit you way too easy. I mean, let's say let's say you all you did it. You always did it before you went to bed. And, and uh, you know, you just you just you're, you're laying awake, you're tossing and turning. And you're like, man, I just need to sleep. You know what I'm saying? They call it the poor man's sleeping pill. So you decide to whack one, whack one off like a fool. Well, hey, that failure and the subsequent consequences of that failure are going to shake you out of that hypnotic rhythm. They're going to shake you out of that. And ideally, you know, because there's really two ways you can go. That failure, and two people, people respond to failures in two different ways. Some people, 
they decide after they fail, well, I failed, so I guess I can just fail to the maximum. And they just keep going. They fail, and so they said, well, there's no limit to this failure. When in reality, that one failure can be your ultimate success if you use it correctly. And this is what I'm going to go into now. It leads me to my next point. You have to view temptations, you have to view these urges as an opportunity for you to conquer your impulses. You have to see these moments of, of temptation, these moments of, of you know, of, of times where you feel like you might fold as an opportunity for you to grow stronger. And after a failure, you know what I'm saying, it may seem like, dang, how do I get stronger from this? But you have to remember, you can always get back up. You have to see it as taking a knee. You know, you're in a boxing match. You're trying to fight these temptations. Yeah, that, that might have hit you hard, bro. Take a knee, bro. Man, it might, but don't get knocked out. Get your ass back up. Get it, man, give it seven seconds if you need to. But don't let it go to ten. Don't lose the fight. Get back up. You can still rise again and keep on fighting. And in fact, you can learn your lesson from that. You can be like, oh man, he really snuck me with a with a wide hook there. I need to make sure I'm keeping my guard up a little higher. In that same vein, you have to learn your lesson from how these from how you know you the the, uh, the challenge hits you, from how this temptation interacts with you. It's like, dang. This really hit me because I was feeling sleepy and this and that. I need to make sure that my willpower is all the more determined here. Whenever I'm feeling sleepy, I need to make sure that maybe I'll watch a retention video before I go to bed to put it on the forefront of my mind. But again, we'll get to that. We'll get to your whys. We'll get to your whys. Right now, I want to talk about the fact that you need to be the captain of your own ship. If you're letting impulses, if you're letting things like uh, you know your urges lead the way, if you're letting these things master you, your ship's committing mutiny. You know, you have to see this as, and I make this analogy a lot, but you are sailing a ship, you know what I mean? You're sailing on the ocean seas, and you have semen. You have semen, actual, genuine semen. I mean, now, now, just, look at this. You have semen that are your sailors, sail, sailors, and you have semen in your body. That's like your actual semen, your, your sperm. And understand that both your semen and your sperm are going to have their own wants and desires. You know what I'm saying? If you're sailing a ship, you're going to have, you know, you know, these these guys that don't want to scrub the deck. They want to, you know, jump off board and, and go do their own thing. Mutiny. And you have to keep these things in line. In the same way, your sperm, I mentioned this a lot, but they're little subconsciouses. They have their own little subconscious. That's how when they leave your body, they can go into an egg and make a whole new life. They have their own wills and desires within you. And once you get to a certain point of retention, the, all those accumulated wills and desires, they're going to manifest into you wanting to bust a nut because they think that as you've trained them to for years upon years, porn is the way that you can just get them out there to something when there is actually nothing there. You're sending them out to dead space, to the vast ocean with nowhere to go. They gonna die. They don't know that though. And they just want to get out. And so when you can control that urge, when you can master yourself in that regard and hold yourself true and hold yourself steady and say, nah, y'all gonna stay in here and power me and build more testosterone so that I might find that potential mate, so that I might find that one and true girl, and then you guys can go into. Then you guys can help build my relationship. Then we can then 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 I'll let you loose. But until we find that colony, you ain't going. And then once you once you put your foot down in that regard, you will become the captain of your ship, the ruler of your vessel. And you need to remain that. You have to enforce those rules continuously. It's not something that you do just once. You know what I'm saying? Because the urges, they're going to keep coming. Until a certain point when they really do, they really do just, just they dissipate almost entirely. Once you reach a certain point of retention, you have reprogrammed your brain. But you have to remember, for years upon years, you were doing the exact opposite. So it takes a long time before your brain ever gets with a new program. This leads me to my final point. Uh, excuse me, not my final point, my next point. You need to know the reason why you're retaining and be determined, be steadfast in your commitment to it. You know, when these temptations come, you have to keep that reason on the forefront of your mind, that reason why. Be that, man, I'm doing this because I value my personal strength. I value my masculinity too much to sell it for a few moments of quick pleasure. Be that because you understand that you're trying to preserve yourself for you know religious reasons, you're trying to maintain your purity. Whatever it might be, keep that reason on the forefront of your mind, and then be determined to commit to it in 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 whatever 
way possible, whatever way necessary. You know what I mean? Be that, man, I feel this urge really strong right now. I'm going to go take a shower. I'm going to go take a cold shower and really shock my brain out of this. I'm going to watch a couple of retention videos to make sure I understand the true importance of me maintaining my seat. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to call a friend and talk to someone else who's on retention, someone else who's doing this journey with me and talk to them about, you know, how, how well they're doing and how, how, how deep they're going on this and what benefits they're seeing. You know, you need to make sure that you're valuing your benefits and have that as your reason why. If that's if, if it's only the benefits that you're getting, have that as your reason why and then commit to that. And it's when you can hold on to that reason why that you have the biggest, the strongest weapon against the urges to do so, to the urges to lose that, to relapse. Your reason why is what's going to combat those those temptations the most effectively. Now, this leads me to my final point. Ties into this exquisitely. Make your goal more attractive than the alternative. You know, a, an example for this is like eating your vegetables versus eating fast food. Yeah, you might have this urge and this desire to go eat some fast food real quick. I mean, yeah, you might feel tempted to just go eat some fast food. And I mean, it's tasty, right? Some quick pleasure. But at the end of the day, that fast food is filled with soy. Now, I mention this a lot as well, but if there's only one takeaway you get from this video, remember, Soy is a xenoestrogen. Soy is, when it gets in your body, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a compound that mimics estrogen. So once it's in your body, you're going to be acting more feminine. You're going to, because estrogen is the feminine hormone. You're going to be acting far more feminine. Your masculinity is going to be decreased. Not only that, but it's going to combat the testosterone that you have. So your balls are going to start shrinking. Your, your semen's motility is going to go down. Your semen's quantity is going to go down. You're killing your sperm, eating all that fast food. So, because fast food, if you if you if you don't believe it for yourself, look at every allergen menu for every fast food joint out there, and look at what every item has inside of it: soy, to an excessive quantity. So, anytime you're eating fast food, you gotta equate that to killing your semen. You have to equate that to losing your masculinity. Understand that every time you eat some some processed food with soy in it. You're murdering your cum, bro. You're murdering your sailors. It's sad, man. It's sad that they have us unaware of how this stuff affects us. It's when, it's when you only do the research for yourself that you discover it. And so, again, eating fast food, sh good in the short term, detrimental down the line. Versus eating some vegetables. may not taste good up front, but it's when you can make that the vegetable. Again, so understand you're making... Yeah, you under, when you understand that fast food is not as attractive as it seems, you can make vegetables more attractive. It's like, dang, you start seasoning them correctly. You're like, okay, well, I, all I need to do here is, you know, value this. This is this is better for me. This is more nutritious. This is going to, I can actually make it taste good if I, bro, you, you're trying to eat some broccoli. Put some cheese and some seasonings on that, and it'll taste just as fire as some fast food. You know what I'm saying? Bro, it's like you can make these things more attractive, more tasty. But you have to position them. You have to change your perspective. You have to put in the work to make sure that they present themselves as more attractive. This is going to be nutritious. It's going to feel my body. This is going to actually help my sperm's production. <laughs> and that's the only way that you can think about it. In that same vein, you have to see retention as more attractive than releasing. You have to understand that when you retain, when you hold on to your sperm, that's going to give you power. And yeah, sure, it may not, it, your body may not feel good. I mean, when I was first on retention, I was like, dang, I'm not going to use this thing again. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to touch, I'm not going to touch this thing. It's not going to get used. I'm not the kind of guy who's going to go out and get some chicks. I'm, I'm waiting for the one. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, I'm like, dang, this thing's not going to get used for a long time, huh? And it's like, yeah. And when, it's once you can understand that that not getting used is way more attractive, is way better than, you know, using it all the time. And here's why, preserving yourself, preserving your semen, and not using that diddle, not whacking yourself off, like, hey, it's pretty fruity if you ask me, but, and I'll say, not touching yourself in that regard, and holding on to your sperm makes you stronger, it increases your testosterone, and I'll link, I'll link the study in the description, just so y'all have the facts, it's not just me bullshitting, you know what I'm saying, like, you will have more testosterone, after a week, they've proven it, that if you abstain from jerking off, you got extra testosterone. You have more confidence, more energy. Your voice get deeper. You have, you're just more vital in general. Your eyes shine. I mean, goodness gracious. The benefits are innumerable. The benefits are what make you a man. They're what make you 
you know, a powerful human being, as powerful as you should be, as powerful as society does not want you, as the modern agenda does not want you, versus dumping your semen. You have to understand how unattractive that is. You have to understand how that's going to make you weaker. You know, and if it's if it's the only thing that stops you from jerking off in that moment is under is thinking about the alternative of that. Oh man, for this next whole week, I'm going to be a little bit weaker. Not just a little bit, a lot of bit weaker. I'm going to struggle to make eye contact with men, with women, with anyone. I'm going to feel just less of a man when I'm around these people. Especially when you've been on a high streak of retention. When you dump all that, oh man, you you it's the difference is like night and day. You certainly can see the difference between how you were acting before, the strength that you had, the confidence, the charisma, the magnes- the magnetism that you had, drawing other people in, versus, you know, the unattractiveness that you have, you know, the, the unappeal, people treating you a little bit weird, people just giving you that side eye, you know, I mean, you're going to see the difference in how people operate and, and treat you. Not only, but you're going to see the difference in how you interact with others and how you, you know, go to other people. And not only are you going to see the difference in how you think, you're going to be foggy in the brain, you're going to be, you know, just just less insightful, less creative, creative. it's going to destroy so much within you. And it's, I mean, it's, it's completely, it's completely detrimental to your existence and your well-being. And when you can frame those two things properly, you'll better fight the temptations. You'll better fight those urges when they arise. You'll control your impulses and re- maintain and remain the master of your vessel. It's when you can prioritize keeping, you know, that that frame of mind of this is what's good for me and this is what's not. And then being determined to commit to your progress, to your journey, and not sell it, not give it away for a quick moment of pleasure. You will maintain, you will overcome the challenges. And overcoming the challenges leads to supreme growth. Is when you can conquer those temptations that you start to grow in an immeasurable way. You know, it's like, in fact, the joy of retention almost is conquering those urges because after a while, they just disappear. After a while, they just don't exist anymore. You know what I'm saying? Once you train your brain to value retention, retaining your seed, retaining your strength, keeping the testosterone high, once you can train your brain to treat that as, you know, your your goal, as, as, as the again, the better alternative, that's when you are, I mean, you're free. You've broken the chains that have been held, holding you back for your whole life, damn near, since we were, you know, preteens almost. That was for me, man. Bruh, I mean, bro, back in the day I was doing it. And it's like, golly, it's like, it's like demonic chains, man. It's like, and even if you don't want to see it as some kind of spiritual thing, you know, it's, these, it's, it's a literal habit that holds on to you and then holds you back stunts your development is when you can release yourself from those chains that you start to grow and become the strongest individual that you can be better yet the best version of yourself and that's what we should all be trying to attain so we all should be trying to become the best versions of ourselves all right y'all hope this video enlightened you and uh taught you a couple things about conquering your urges because it's altogether too easy to be swept away by the strength of our urges but it's when you have a reason why it's when you know you you value and and in fact you welcome the conquering your your temptations conquering your urges as an opportunity to grow past them it's like going to the gym you know i mean it's when you can decide that working out is going to give you that strength it's going you welcome that challenge you welcome the strain of working out that's when you step into true you know true freedom True release, <laughs> and not the release of seed, but the release from the chains, the release from all the toxic, all the toxic habits that have been holding you back. And you know, once you conquer this, the urges of retention. Once you conquer this need to waste your sperm, you'll start to see yourself conquering other bad habits in your life. You'll start to it'll start to become altogether easier to conquer all these other chains that have been holding you back. Freedom from one thing leads to freedom to others. You know, it's not a rhythm. Once you start putting yourself on that path to freeing yourself, you'll start to see yourself setting yourself free in so many other ways. So prioritize freedom, prioritize growth, and prioritize strength. And you will see the results night 
uh, clear as day. <laughs> All right, take care, y'all. Peace.